Hello, everyone. It's great having you here. Uh, today, we have this amazing Fireside Chat with Jonathan, who is the founder of Hey Carson, which is probably the biggest hub for short-term projects or recurring needs and full-time Shopify work. He also founded the biggest Shopify entrepreneurs group in Facebook with more than 116,000 members and is currently building up partnerly.net, a private community of founders and marketing professionals at top professional partner companies. So very, uh, very active, very busy person. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks for having me, Ed. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it is, it's great having you. Um, I follow you, um, you know, we are connected in partner league. We are in the, also in your community. We are partners with, with Hey Carson. Uh, so, uh, I see your work and something that always, um, that I really admire of you is you have a unique perspective when it comes to partnerships and community. We're going to talk about it, but before, before we start uh, with the topic is uh, why don't you share something about yourself with the audience so they can get to know you better? Yeah, cool. Um, I'm from Canada. I'm born in uh, Ottawa, the capital of Canada. And I, I have, I now currently live in Spain and I have two young, two young daughters. I, I absolutely love it here. Um, and yeah, those are just a couple of little things. I grew up a big sports fan, a big hockey fan. And one of my first jobs was working for in the marketing department for the Montreal Canadians. And, uh, I learned quite a bit from, from that job. It was, um, it was in the merchandising and marketing department. So, uh, I was exposed to many things and that kind of set me in a direction of being a business owner, um, about for about 10 years now. So yeah. And aside from that, I've also been selling, I've been connected to the e-commerce space because I've been selling on, I started selling on eBay in 2001 and it was pretty much my, my income uh, to get myself through school. So that gave me a lot of exposure to the early e-commerce days and how things worked. Um, and, and, you know, things have changed dramatically since then. That, that is an amazing story. Um, you know, I have to confess, uh, this last season, I was really rooting for, for the Habs to win the cup. <laughs> it would have been awesome, awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's always like Canada needs this Stanley cup and we've been waiting, I think 28 years for it. So I think maybe we can wait another year, another two, let's see. <laughs> but this year looks so close. Uh, so getting to the, the the topic and i'm and i'm fascinated by it, as i mentioned this before by your perspective because you, your life history and your life story puts you at, at at this point where you obviously get something about communities and the value of communities that most of us don't get can can you talk a bit about it i i think 12 years ago i had a part-time job it was a remote job and it was uh, as a moderator for a large community software company out of California called uh, Lithium. And I was just a part-time moderator, moderating different um, customer forms, customer communities for big brands like Verizon and AT&T. And, and so that was kind of like my, my insight into like how customer communities are built around brands. Um, and then six years ago, when we, when we started Hey Carson, we, you know, I, I think what I understood very quickly was that Shopify had had this community of of partners and experts and app developers at the time, and there was just something unique about it. There was something interesting about it, and I I kind of, I connected with a few early partners in that community, and those relationships are what drove growth. So I didn't get growth from SEO traffic, from paid traffic. I got growth from partnering with others in the community. And so I just, that just kind of solidified how I thought things should work and uh, how, and it just kind of opened up like a, a growth channel or a, a growth option for, for our, my kind of business. Um, yeah. And since then, I think I, I look at every business opportunity with, you know, how does, how does community play a role here? How does 
partnerships play a role as well as like branding and all the other important things. I love your answer because you have synthesized uh, so many important concepts in one answer. And, but I will just highlight these uh, three keywords. You talk about partnerships as relationships. Mm -hmm. You talk about uh, partnerships as essential as a um, engine for growth. And you have defined uh, where you see that uh, unique overlap, right, between communities and partnerships, which is what makes uh, what the work that you're doing so so different to all the things that we see out there in the market. Um, so can, can can you tell us a little bit of, you, you say that you started with eBay and that's your experience early with e-commerce, but how did you start it with Hey Carson particularly? Um, from from 2011 to 2014, I ran a, a an SEO agency with some social aspects to it, and um, I I left that partnership in 2015, and I was looking for the next thing to do, and then you know I I, I had free time, I had a little bit of run room um, to try things, and the first obvious thing was you know let's let's try putting up an, an e-commerce store. And um, I, you know, I tried with Magento and WooCommerce and I, and I struggled a little bit um, as a non-technical person. And one of my friends at the time was a Shopify expert already. And he said, you know, I'll set you up here. I'll guide you through it and let's see what happens. And I got more done myself in three or four days than I did in three or four months with a developer on WooCommerce. Um, and it's not to say that those platforms aren't, aren't great because they're absolutely good platforms, very flexible, but for a profile like mine to get things going, um, it was just Shopify was, was, uh, just a better, a better answer. And so I started building out a print shop, uh, selling prints, like the one that's on your back wall, um, from different, uh, different, um, topics and different, um, imagery. And I started to understand that the, the Shopify community was, was growing. And we, um, there was this wonderful business in the WordPress space that was called WP Curve, and they had productized small scale design development. And I just knew that the Shopify world was full of people like me, non technical entrepreneurs that you know could get far within the Shopify journey, but you know to grow, you kind of hit some technical barriers often. Um, so this productized service model for small scale de design development what in the WordPress space was the was the inspiration for Hey Carson, which is a very similar offer in the Shopify space. And um, since then, it's evolved quite a bit. It's, um, it's more of like a micro agency now. And um, we have a team of, of 30 with about 20 developers, designers, and um, thousands of happy customers over the last six years. And so, yeah, I think what happened was we were running the store while running the service and the service just kind of took off. So I had to let go of the, the store, uh, the brand that I was building, the print shop, uh, but I was okay with that. I love these stories when you see, uh, when, when, some, when we see a successful business, we, uh, you know, it's, it's common people ask the question, how, how did you figure this out? How did you come up with the idea? And it's really like, a, Eureka moment, right? It's more like you describe in your own case, a, a progression is, is being there, experiencing the thing in, in first person, led you to understand, and, and then what if I do this? What if I do that? But I, I love that, that progression, very, very interesting. Um, and you mentioned something that before starting Hey Carson, uh, you were working in agency with SEO. And most, if you can call traditional digital mar uh, marketeers, we have this kind of a Bible like, oh, first you have to do your SEO chores, right? Mm -hmm. And SEM and do these basic things, then move to partnerships. Um, but then you're here and you really recognize how, well, maybe through partnerships, I can grow faster and faster you grow, right? So it, it is, I, I like your experience on how you're seeing partnerships, not something like to accelerate growth or to catalyze, uh, a, a big part of the curve that is happening, but actually to start the growth in itself. 
is that a fair understanding of how you see it? Yeah, I, I mean, just to just to go back, I think uh, the 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 experience I had with SEO was, I mean, it was very tumultuous. A lot of changes between 2010 and 2013, very discouraging, and and a couple of our a couple like the business really relied on on understanding SEO more than other people or more than our clients at least. And it became very unpredictable. When we started Hey Carson, I, I'll, like, I think we started thinking about SEO and organic traffic probably early this year. So we, we all but ignored it completely um, because the first, yeah, the, the first little growth engines came from partnerships. We, we were able to mm, connect with a theme company that had a need for small scale, a need to send merchants to a small scale support service. And um, they didn't have this. So when we presented it to them, they were like, put up the landing page for us tomorrow and we'll start sending people. It's exactly what we did. And that was really the catalyst for growth. And ever since then, I'm just like a, a bigger believer in that than, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I think SEO and organic traffic are important is important but you know I, I i've operated now with it in the back um and successfully so i think um you know i think it's it's just the way things worked yeah lovely and that's the, exactly what what we do in everflow helping companies do that and we see this happening um and how partnerships can really accelerate growth for companies but it is a uh, fascinating how you discovered this through uh, your own service, like your own experience. So now we are uh, talking, we're straight at the core of, you know, of the, the topic of solution providers. There are so many uh, amazing services out there, right? From templates to agencies doing design, funnels, yeah. copyright, so many things out there, right? Um, how do you see uh, solution providers approaching partnerships today in a way that really help them grow faster? So, I, yeah, I, I just think that a lot of solutions and a lot of like apps are approaching agencies. Agencies are looking for technology solutions. I think what's still, what's still a little too prominent is a lot of these partnership programs are leading their conversations with, you know, commission structures and referral fees and, and kickbacks. And I, I just think that's it, what has worked for us has fewer is, is fewer relationships, more focused and having your solution or your app fit into the, 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 the flow of the other company's service or app experience delivery. So for, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, we, we, do, we do small scale design development at Hey Carson we're not in a position to refer email marketing tools very often. So, you know, if we get approached by an email marketing app, it's great. We'll have the conversation. We'll maybe do some co-marketing or co-content, but we can't work that email marketing tool within the, our service flow. So naturally the commission structure, I mean, it's, it's secondary. Like it's, it's not important to us, right? We want to improve the experience of our, of our merchants. So what we're looking for, we do a lot of theme customizations. We're looking for apps that, you know, extend the theme capabilities or make our developers lives easier when we're delivering these projects. So, so that's kind of the type of partnerships that we're, we're open to and we're looking for. Um, and I think just to come back to your question, really thinking when you're engaging with the partner, is this, is that app or solution a part of your normal service delivery. Um, if not, it's okay to just consider it like a co-marketing uh, or, or co-content creation partnership and not get into the weeds with like a, a very integrated partnership. Um, yeah. That's that super interesting take. Um, and 100% agree with everything you're saying and I'm, I'm learning also, but I wanna learn more about your experience and I'm going, I'm about to throw a curveball your way. Okay. I, asking a kind of an uncomfortable question, in, uh, if you can say. So I'm sure in your journey with Hey Carson, there are things that you try and 
they flopped, right? They, yeah. they didn't work like, you know, for, for partner apps and, and perks. And so what can you bring any example and why you think it didn't work? Yeah, I think I think we a, a while a couple of years ago, we built a a directory, a directory of preferred app partners. And and at the time we were building it to give our our customers like options, like there were perks tied to these. Um, it was a directory. There were perks tied to um, every one of these apps. And I, we, at one point we had 140 or 150 listings there. And the reason looking like it wasn't very effective. It looked nice. It was this wonderful catalog directory of things merchants could go through and explore. But actually they were coming to Hey Carson for service, not for, you know, to find app solutions necessarily. So it was a bit of a distraction. And in the end, it was a little bit too big. Like we, we had all these topical partnerships, all these uh, listings for all these apps, and there was very few redemption or click-throughs happening. And so I think if I had to do it again, I would probably still do it, but I would look at maybe having 10 to 15 really good partnerships with very curated and selected um, app companies that really fit the needs of the people that were actually serving the segment of, of merchant that we were serving. Um, so that I would say that was a bit of a, a bit of a failure. It's something that we kind of kept doing without measuring. And we ended up with this wonderful directory that was not so successful. I see other people doing it also. And I, I also wonder um, if, if they're, you know, if they're effective, um, I see it, agencies promoting apps and I see apps promoting agencies through these directories and I'm always curious if it's if it's working yeah it's an it's an interesting topic right and I, I really appreciate you, you sharing so openly that case because I would say 99% of us driving partnerships have a, a section like that director or dreaming having something richer like that director is going to drive value by itself and when you ask clients and do some research, um, in, in my experience is most of the time, the number one reason why they would get into such a page is to see, uh, do you have any recommendation? It's, it's looking more like validation. Mm -hmm. Do you work with these guys? Yes, I do. I have this, uh, I'm mentioning this on the directory. Oh, they have a relationship. So somehow they are, checking that and that's it. Rarely they will go deeper and say, okay, now I want to figure out what type of integration, all the technical details. So most of the time is, are you playing the tech stack? Are you playing with this technology? Yeah. Like a quick validation, quick reference and rarely really drive a decision from them. So yes, we put a lot of times on uh, so much emphasis, right? On that directory end up nowhere. And I confess I'm guilty of that mistake yeah. as well. <laughs> but I, I think, I mean, there's, there's some good things that come from it. There's, there's obviously like, um, you know, authority and like backlink, backlinking happening. But I, this is where I think I really believe like a smaller but stronger directory could be way more impactful. Um, yeah, whether it's agency apps or app agency or even app app, because there's, you know, a lot of apps are integrating. Um, it's to varying degrees, but, uh, but yeah, it's, yes. I, I wonder. Yes. Well, um, you know, when, when, uh, companies are trying to find affiliates to grow their partnership programs, um, they, they suffer the same thing, uh, when they go to any of these networks and they see, wow, 50,000, uh, of potential affiliates. And then you have to see, okay, how, how I'm going to choose the, the best. 10, 15, I have to work with and yeah. it's daunting. It becomes a problem. Um, so uh, it, it is that the third time that you mentioned the word focus, right? Focus, focus on the short list, the ones that drive value, the ones that make sense is quality and focus as opposed to a uh, big list and directory just reinforce uh, that idea. Um, so you obviously did things that work very well with your with your partners. You just mentioned a, a great example for, for everyone to learn from your experience about what not to do. Can you share what, a, a, an example of something 
really you did in Carson, in Hey Carson, that say, oh, that was that was a great idea, a great practice, and really helped us grow faster. Yeah, I think th th this year, early this year, was was a point where you know we we had we we had a lot of customer data, we had a lot of of you know project descriptions. We just had a lot of experience and, I, and we were, we went into the year like, okay, we're going to focus on a few channels this year. Partnerships was one of them. And I, I always felt overwhelmed with partnerships. So, so this year we were like, okay, let's look at all the potential partners and look at this. Like we look at our target market of customers. Like what is the profile of our, of our ideal partner at Hey Carson? And we landed on, on theme companies because they, they, they have merchants, a merchant who purchases a theme or who switches a theme is usually at a point where they can either do everything themselves or they have internal resources, which a lot of Shopify merchants don't. Or the third option is they have to go out and hire contractors or help. And we, we always felt like people who came to us with a theme issue or a theme desire or a theme project were our best customers. And they were being referred to us uh, by some of these theme companies through official and through unofficial referrals. And, and so we just decided to focus on themes this year um, and positioning ourselves as an authority on the topic. So we, we worked with a lot of theme companies this year um, on creating content. Um, we're, we're, we just rolled out our own version of a theme reviews section where merchants can review their themes under our domain. And we're still working, working on that. And that's providing a new marketing channel to theme developers and positioning us as an authority. So this is the direction we're on now. We're, we're already seeing nice results. We'll happily have conversations with app companies and agencies just to kind of meet and network and discover. But when it comes to content, when it comes to actual like deep effort, we're focused on theme developers. And, and I, I really feel like it's, it's paying off, um, but you know, we still got some work to do, but it, the, you know, it, we're putting things out there and, and like we're, we're trying to offer more value upfront and our theme partners love it. They're like, oh, you're doing this for us um, before even asking for anything. And I, I think that that's the best way to go about it. I just wish that we had more opportunities to meet them in person. You know, like I think, I hope that's going to come back because um, early on when we developed partnerships and the reason Partner League, for example, exists is because I've, I've been able to meet a lot of the Shopify partners in person. And so there's already that human connection despite us being everywhere in the world. Um, but yeah, I think really narrowing in on who your, part, your ideal partner persona is and, and not just kind of throwing everything against the wall is, is a good exercise you know, for bit in business in general when you're setting up a business, but also in, in a partnership uh, within partnership efforts. Yeah, yeah, I can't agree anymore. I, I, I love these answers. Yeah. So when you think about uh, this uh, thing about the typical agency out there, uh, can you mention something you've seen some of these solution providers doing that really help them? Any, any success you've seen in the community with some of your partners and say, oh, this was something really smart, this really draw a lot of value for clients and for the growth? Any, any example so that comes to mind? So you mean an app company that's kind of engaging? Yeah, with a, a third party you partner yeah. with, you interact with, and something yeah. you see that say, "I like this." Yeah, absolutely. I think I, well, it's no, it's no, um, it's no secret that a lot of solution companies are are creating partnership departments or even hiring their first partner manager and really investing in in this in this idea, right? And what, what I like in what I'm seeing from Shopify apps is, you know. Shopify apps want to integrate with each other, um, but they also want to partner with agencies and service providers. And the integration with another app is, it's not simple, but it's like, hey, let's come up with an idea that, that's going to serve our common clients and create that solution uh, as an integration. 
but agencies, I mean, agencies can only handle so many tech partners, right? And, and so they have to be selective. They have to fit within their service delivery, like I was mentioning earlier. And what, I, what I've been seeing this year that I like is simple things sometimes, like an app company putting together a, a list of expert quotes on you know, shipping or, or on supply chain management and reaching out to agencies or agency founders or representatives, giving them the quote and then promoting that article around. And I think that's a, that's a nice example of doing something for a partner first that, you know, it, it shows like that, you, that you, you see them as an authority in the topic and you're highlighting that to your audience. So the agency founder is like, okay, I've been highlighted to this new, um, this new audience that's relevant to me. So we're seeing that, I really like that. And I also like just how app companies are putting together events and bringing in agency founders and representatives to to speak on panels and i just i i like that type of activity even if it's like it's not a deep integration but a lot of these things are great starts to partnerships to long-term partnerships um yeah and i think you know a real successful partnership just doesn't happen like that it happens from from like one conversation that leads to another project that leads to another project. And sometimes it's not always smooth, right? Sometimes it's not always wonderful. And I think it's about staying connected to that partner, working through whatever issue it could, could have happened and trusting that there's something here, like we share common customers. So let's keep at this, whatever, whatever it could be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very, very interesting approach because when, when I, when I hear you talking, inevitably I start, uh, thinking or contrasting this against my own experience, uh, leading partnerships at Everflow and, and I, I connect with everything that you're saying. And even to s some of the kind of side comments that you bring your answer, like the value of the face to face interaction, right? Yeah. Sometimes companies have this problem like you have an app you have so many people trying to partner with you you know that if you try to overstretch you're not going to really have the focus uh, that is, is going to really drive the max value for for the clients uh, so many times the these companies end up putting um these partner programs between between them and their successful relationships and the process, I mean, we end up serving the process instead of the process serving the business, right? Yeah. And, uh, and then you go to, you know, a business trip, a conference, you meet the person face to face, and sit in a table, meet, speak for 15, 20 minutes, you agree, and you end up agreeing things that probably couldn't agree the last three, six months, uh, yeah. going through meetings and partner programs and uh, doing a lot of traditional things. So yes, the value of the face to face, uh, and the human interaction. And that's where I believe uh, the partner league community is uh, simplifying those connections and making it way simpler to connect the right people in an easy way and promote these relationships beyond the, the formality of the partner programs around them. Yeah, I, the, so the, the partner league is, is a community of Shopify partners. So agencies, um, people building apps, people building themes. And, you know, the, the, the premise is really like Shopify has used to have this, this partner conference called Shopify Unite. And you could, it's the most fun I've ever had professionally, at least. And, and at events, it's always something I look forward to. I think there were four before 2020 and they were like, it was so exciting to meet people that were on the same kind of had the same ambitions, you know, and, it was almost hard to go to the to the actual speaking events because you got caught in the hallway with people. So what I'm trying to bring to the partner league is this this experience in the hallway track and and those those types of conversations. I it will never be able to replicate it like like it happens offline, but that's kind of what the what we're trying to recreate is that level of conversation between Shopify partners um that is meaningful and it's you know it's helped us 
indirectly build our own partner program at Hey Carson. Um, and it's part of the reason why we do it. But um, also a reason is, you know, having been in this space for so long, a lot of people were asking for intros. And you, you, nev you never want to take like, you never want to write a bad email intro, you know, you want to take your time, you want to do it. And, and sometimes they take time, but they're usually worth it. So this is this was my way of saying, okay, guys, and girls, we're all here now. And I've met more partners because of it so that was just a, a little sideline as to why we're doing that love it and it works like that at least for us uh so i have this uh kind of uh we were reaching uh the end of this for a chat i really enjoy listening your perspective uh but we have to to wrap up inevitably so uh one of the last questions is when when you look at the Shopify partner ecosystem, um, in, excuse me, the, the, the Shopify ecosystem, uh, where do you think are the biggest untapped partnership opportunities? From you, I have from a brand, from an, an e-commerce brand perspective or from a Shopify partner perspective? Uh, start with the partner perspective and yeah. great to hear the, the brand perspective as well. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I just think like, um, as far as like the, the biggest opportunities, um, <laughs> I think integrations between apps can, 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 will continue to get better. Um, you know, th they're not always good and they're not always developed. And I, I think the opportunity is, like I said earlier, to, to develop them. So start from a seed of an idea. It's like a tech product, right? You need to get feedback and improve it. And I think a lot of these app integrations um, they happen, they get promoted, and then the ideas don't get developed. So I, I still think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, in, in general, I, th I think with the growing number of Shopify apps, there's, there's, opportunity, for, um, there's opportunity for them to, to shine a little bit more in how they connect with agencies. There's so many great solutions that either have maybe poor messaging or not strong enough branding. And if they just kind of tweaked that a little bit, they would get the attention of, of these agencies that are in need of solutions that, you know, make their clients happier, make their operation more profitable. So I think there's still some inefficiencies in the, uh, in the app agency partnerships. Um, and from the brand side, I think we're seeing, you know, I, I don't know, like brand partnerships, I, I think of influencers, but I don't see a lot of examples of brands that share values um, and audiences. I don't see enough of them doing work together. Um, and, and there's a lot of opportunity for content. There's a lot of opportunity for like real estate sharing, especially in the post-purchase experience. Um, so we're, we're kind of seeing some apps come up there where uh, people are sharing real estate on you know, thank you pages, thank you emails. And I'm excited to kind of see where that goes for, for brands as, you know, paid ads continues to climb. Um, I do think we're going to see more apps that serve to help brands partner, if that makes any sense. Uh, absolutely. We're seeing the same trend, uh, the same trend, because ultimately is you're getting, you're getting the shoes, you're getting the purse. Uh, why not getting a matching scarf? So Oh, great exactly. upsell opportunity, the right moment, lowest friction possible, just monetize it. Absolutely. Um, so w when you think like two, three years down the road, right? Um, what do you think will be um, more demanded by these uh, e-commerce merchants from these uh, Shopify solution providers? What, what are the things? You mentioned one possible, which is the apps to do this, right? Sharing real estate and uh, leverage each other. But what, what are the things you think would be more relevant um, and to really be successful uh, serving these brands and tapping opportunities in the, particularly in the Shopify ecosystem three years from now? I, I think we're already seeing a, a lot more if I, if I, if we look at services, we're seeing a lot more specificity in how service providers are delivering their service. So you, so you have, you, you don't have email marketers anymore. You have Clavio specialists, right? You don't have, you don't have uh, customer service consultants. You have 
uh, gorgeous integration experts. So you, you, you have this specificity that's, that's happening with like a second wave of, of platforms that are being built on Shopify. Um, people are specialists in this or in that. And I, I just think that's a result of so many technologies being presented to brands that like a solution that's specific is going to be more um, convincing or, or more attractive than a general solution. Like if you drive a BMW, you know, you, you can go to the BMW mechanic or you can go to the general mechanic the, the you know, price might be more, but the, the offer is stronger there. So we're going to see a lot more of that. And for me as a service comp, as a, you know, as a design and development service company, I just love seeing all this new tech because the more innovation there is, the more I believe brands need help putting the pieces together. And, and so like, everybody likes to say services like this or that and you know apps are the way to go but i'm very i'm very bullish on um being a service service provider in this industry because it's like there's always going to be work um and and if you can have get that good messaging and get clients to trust and and come back for you know a second third fourth fifth project um then you'll be in a, a good position yeah, you just described the partnership flywheel in the Shopify ecosystem, because yes. as it becomes more and more specific, as you described, uh, so gets the diversity and slash complexity of the marketing tech stack, which drives more of the need of the services that agencies can drive. Because as you mentioned, integrations are not perfect or not integrations are where they're supposed to be, right? Yeah. Uh, so they end up feeding each other. And uh, if you want to solve for CRO on your website, well, you will get these amazing tools, but someone needs to look at the CRO from a holistic perspective, yeah. hence the agency services. Um, so this, that's a number one reason and incentive for solution providers to partner with technologies and help clients and keep uh, growing. Interesting take, very interesting take. Uh, Jonathan, um, I really and loved having you here. I, I love your, your candy answers, which are based not on, on thoughts, but on real life experience, which is very rich. I really appreciate having you here. And we opened this today mentioning uh, the community's topic, right? Um, if, if you have to uh, imagine um, three years from now, where do you imagine um, your two biggest communities uh, where you think they will be, where you imagine partner league being, what do you imagine the Shopify entrepreneurs community that you have on Facebook, which happens to be probably the biggest one out there. What do you imagine them three years from now? Yeah, I don't know. I, so the Shopify entrepreneurs community has been running for, for seven years on Facebook's group product. Um, and it's, it's been, it's been getting a little bit more difficult, um, as, as things change on Facebook. So I'm hoping that that one will still be around, um, but it's, it's, let's see, let's see what happens. Like, this is an example of building on somebody else's land. And I've been doing it enthusiastically for the past seven years. Um, so let, let, let's see, I'm still involved there every day. I enjoy helping merchants with day-to-day -day problems that I can help with or calling in other experts that I know, you know can help. So that's always a lot of fun. I hope I'm still doing that in some way. The, the Partner League is a private community on Slack. Slack doesn't necessarily build, build their product for communities. They build them for teams. And we're currently working on um, an extension that will work with Slack. So I'm, I'm very bullish about the Shopify partner space in the next few years. And um, I'm very excited about connecting with these people and this community is growing. It's growing a lot slow, a lot slower, but that's okay. I think it's not meant to be a really big community. It's meant to be like a focused and valuable community for, for members. So I think it'll still be around, hopefully maybe, maybe not entirely on Slack and um, have some other features to it that will be interesting. That is awesome. I, I'm, I'm sure partnerly will continue to grow, to grow as well as the entrepreneur entrepreneurs community and in a way you are uh, proving to break an old mantra uh, of you know communities when you build when you build a community 
there is this common wisdom that eventually you will lose control of the community in the sense that it will grow by itself so much content generated and the participation of the members will make we make it so big and you are not going to be uh, more driving that growth. It will be like a self-sustained and, uh, but uh, you're proving how, but uh, like by managing the community and staying focused on, on the right focus on value, it, it makes sense to keep uh, like a tight management on that. So it continues to drive the value supposed to um, yeah. and avoid what happened. So to so many communities in the past that they end up, Dithering and dying because of that lack of governance and control. So, um, you, you are also uh, writing a little book about <laughs> making communities work in the long run. I, I think I'd be I'd be remiss if I didn't say that the way that Shopify has built and run their communities is 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 a pretty good example for a lot of us. Um, they're getting very very big now, and the partner community is one like you just said that has kind of taken on a life of its own. Um, where partners themselves are building communities, they're building solutions for each other. Um, Everflow is an example of a solution that a, a Shopify partner can use. So there's a lot of this like this uh, momentum happening under Shopify, and I've taken a lot of uh, example from from that. And uh, yeah, I think um, just an exciting an exciting space to be in. Absolutely. Jonathan, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, today was lovely having you here. Yeah, thanks, Ed. I appreciate it. It was it was very cool. Thanks.